the alien invaders entered our system, intent on utter destruction, unaware they would find salvation at the hands of their greatest enemy, the indomitable humans. Mark Cox steered his aged freighter through space debris, faded tattoos covering arms that once wielded plasma rifles. An emergency broadcast penetrated the static on all frequencies. Mark nudged the volume higher as two translated words emerged. Help, Jem'Hadar. Scans showed origination from an uncharted world surrounded by rubble, remnants of moons destroyed by catastrophic impacts. Against the AI's objections, Mark changed course to investigate. The freighter jolted as it dropped through the turbulent atmosphere, pockmarked by past cataclysms. Upon the ruins of a shattered metropolis, he landed amidst twisted metal and choking alien vines. Movement in the shadows caused Mark's hand to drift instinctively towards his sidearm. An insectoid creature appeared, green exoskeleton shimmering, compound eyes reflecting primal desperation. I am Ceres, last of the Jem'Hadar. Apocalypse has ravaged our species. Our final hope lies with outsiders. Without aid, oblivion is inevitable. The creature's tone conveyed utter defeat. Mark understood the Jem'Hadar faced extinction, victims of a shattered world devouring itself, and worse threats looming unseen. The human knew walking away meant abandoning an entire civilization to the void. And yet, could he trust this alien story? Were other perils lurking eager to consume the unwary? Mark realized his next choice might damn two races or forge an impossible alliance with the future of galaxies in the balance. For the first time in eons, humanity's fate and an alien species' survival were inextricably linked. Beneath the alien sky, Mark and Ceres ventured deeper into the ruins of the once great Jem'Hadar city. The air hung heavy with the weight of a civilization on the brink of collapse as the pair navigated through crumbling structures and overgrown remnants of a lost age. As they approached an ancient temple, its walls adorned with intricate carvings that told the story of the Jem'Hadar's rise and fall, Ceres paused. This is it, he whispered, his voice tinged with a mix of reverence and desperation. The heart of the Jem'Hadar lies within. The two entered the temple, their footsteps echoing through the cavernous halls. Ceres led Mark to a hidden chamber, deep within the heart of the structure. There, resting upon a pedestal, was a pulsating crystalline artifact. Its light cast an eerie glow upon the chamber walls, illuminating the faces of the unlikely allies. The heart of the Jem'Hadar, Ceres explained, his compound eyes fixed upon the artifact, it contains the collective knowledge and genetic material of our entire race. With it, we can rebuild, start anew, but it requires a specific energy source to activate. Mark stepped closer to the artifact, his eyes drawn to the faint pulsing light emanating from its core. As he watched, the light grew stronger, more insistent, as if it sensed his presence. Suddenly, a deep rumbling sound reverberated through the chamber, causing the ground beneath their feet to tremble. Ceres' eyes widened in fear, his exoskeleton shimmering in the dim light. They're coming, he whispered, his voice barely audible above the growing din. Mark turned to Ceres, his brow furrowed in confusion. Who's coming? What's happening? Before Ceres could answer, the temple walls exploded inward, showering the chamber with debris. Through the dust and rubble, a swarm of insectoid creatures burst forth, their chitinous bodies glistening in the faint light. Mark recognized them immediately. The Vex, the rival species that had driven the Jem'Hadar to the brink of extinction. The creatures had been lying dormant beneath the city, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. And now, as they closed in on Mark and Ceres, their intent was clear— to destroy the heart of the Jem'Hadar and exterminate the last remnants of their ancient foe. In that moment, time seemed to slow, as Mark's hand drifted instinctively towards his sidearm. He knew he had only seconds to make a decision, stand and fight, risking his own life and the fate of the Jem'Hadar, or flee with the heart and the hope of an entire species in his hands. 
Mark's hand closed around the heart of the Jem'Hadar, its pulsating light intensifying as he pulled it from the pedestal. With his other hand, he grabbed Ceres by the arm, yanking the insectoid alien towards the temple's exit. The Vex swarm surged forward, their razor-sharp mandibles snapping at Mark and Ceres' heels as they raced through the crumbling corridors. The ground shook beneath their feet, ancient stone cracking and crumbling, as the Vex's pursuit grew ever more relentless. Mark's heart pounded in his chest, adrenaline coursing through his veins as he and Ceres dodged falling debris and leapt over gaping chasms. They burst from the temple's entrance, the Vex hot on their trail. Mark's ship loomed ahead, a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. The Vex swarmed closer, their chitinous bodies glinting in the alien sun as they closed the distance between them and their prey. Mark and Ceres reached the ship just as the Vex began to overtake them, their clawed appendages grasping at their heels. They tumbled inside, Mark slamming his fist against the emergency takeoff button. The ship's engines roared to life, lifting them off the planet's surface as the Vex clung to the hull, their mandibles screeching against the metal. As they hurtled through the atmosphere, Mark clutched the heart of the Gem Hadar, its light pulsing ever brighter. Ceres, his compound eyes wide with fear, spoke in a trembling voice. The heart, it's reacting to the Vex. We must protect it, no matter the cost. Mark nodded, his jaw clenched tight. He knew the stakes were higher than ever before. The fate of the Gem Hadar, and perhaps the entire galaxy, rested in his hands. Suddenly, an alarm blared through the ship's speakers. Mark's eyes darted to the monitor, his blood running cold as he saw the Vex breaching the airlock, their insectoid bodies flooding into the cargo hold where the heart was stored. He knew he couldn't fight them alone. With a shaking hand, he activated the distress signal, hoping against hope that someone, anyone, would answer the call. Just as the Vex were about to reach the cargo hold, a massive shape dropped out of hyperspace, looming over Mark's ship. It was a human battleship, its weapons locked onto Mark's vessel. A gruff voice crackled over the comms. This is Admiral Hawkins, of the HSS Indomitable. Identify yourself and explain the Vex presence on your ship. Mark swallowed hard, realizing he had no choice but to trust the Admiral. This is Mark Cox. I have the last of the Jem'Hadar on board, along with an artifact that could save their species. The Vex are trying to destroy it. We need your help. There was a pause, then Hawkins's voice returned. We'll help you, Cox. But once the Vex are dealt with, that artifact is coming with us. The human military will be very interested in studying it. Mark looked to Ceres, the weight of the decision heavy on his shoulders. He knew he had no choice. It was either hand over the heart, or let the Vex destroy it and the Gem Hadar along with it. Okay, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. You have a deal, Admiral. Mark's heart raced as he faced Admiral Hawkins and the squad of soldiers, their weapons trained on him, and the pulsating heart of the Gem Hadar in his hands. The artifact's sickly green light cast an eerie glow on the faces of the men, their expressions a mix of fear and determination. Hand over the artifact, Cox, Hawkins demanded, his voice cold and unyielding. You have no idea what you're dealing with. Mark's grip tightened on the heart, the weight of his decision bearing down on him. He glanced back at Ceres, still lying motionless on the floor, his exoskeleton flickering with the same unnatural light that emanated from the artifact. I can't do that, Admiral, Mark said, his voice steady despite the fear that gripped him. This is the only hope for the Gem Hadar. I won't let you take it. Hawkins scoffed, his eyes narrowing. You're a fool, Cox. That thing is a weapon, plain and simple. It's killed my men, and it'll kill you too if you don't hand it over. Mark shook his head, backing away slowly. You're wrong. It's not a weapon. It's a lifeline, and I won't let you destroy it. Suddenly a piercing shriek filled the air, and the Vex burst into the room, their insectoid bodies swarming towards the soldiers. Hawkins and his men opened fire, the sound of gunshots and the acrid smell of smoke filling the cramped space. In the chaos, Mark saw his chance. He turned and ran, clutching the heart close to his chest as he raced through the ship's corridors. Behind him, he could hear the sounds of battle, the screams of the dying mingling with the inhuman screeches of the Vex. 
He reached the airlock, his breath coming in ragged gasps. With shaking hands, he punched in the code, the door sliding open with a hiss. Beyond, the vast expanse of space beckoned, cold and unforgiving. Mark hesitated, the heart pulsing in his hands. He knew that if he left now, he would be abandoning Ceres and the Gem Hadar to their fate. But if he stayed, he risked losing the artifact to Hawkins and the human military. The sounds of the battle grew closer, the screeches of the Vex echoing through the ship. Mark closed his eyes, his decision made. He stepped through the airlock, the door sealing shut behind him. As he drifted away from the ship, the heart's light grew brighter, its pulsing more insistent. Mark felt a strange sensation wash over him, a sense of connection to the artifact that he couldn't explain. He turned back towards the ship, watching as it grew smaller in the distance. He knew that he had made the right choice, but the weight of his decision hung heavy on his heart. Suddenly a blinding flash of green light erupted from the ship, engulfing it in a sickly glow. Mark watched in horror as the vessel began to break apart, its hull crumbling and twisting as if crushed by an invisible hand. Mark's heart pounded as he faced down Admiral Hawkins and his soldiers, the pulsing green light of the heart of the Gem Hadar casting eerie shadows across their faces. He took a slow, shaky breath, choosing his words carefully. Admiral, please listen to me. This artifact, it's not just some weapon or technology to be exploited. It's the essence of an entire species, their last hope for survival. If we try to use it for our own gain, there's no telling what kind of destruction we could unleash. Hawkins sneered, his eyes cold and calculating. I don't give a damn about some alien species, Cox. That thing is coming with us, whether you like it or not. Now hand it over, before I have my men take it from you by force. Mark's grip tightened on the heart, its warmth seeping into his skin. He glanced over at Ceres, who had regained consciousness and was struggling to his feet, his compound eyes locked on the heart. In that moment, a silent understanding passed between them. Mark gave a subtle nod, and Ceres lunged forward, his battered exoskeleton shimmering in the dim light as he threw himself at Admiral Hawkins. The soldiers opened fire, the sound of gunshots echoing through the cramped corridor. Mark turned and ran, the heart clutched tightly to his chest as he raced towards the escape pods. Behind him he heard Ceres' agonized screams, the sound tearing at his heart. But he didn't look back, he couldn't afford to. The heart was all that mattered now. He reached the escape pods, his fingers fumbling with the controls as he initiated the launch sequence. The pod sealed shut around him, the hiss of pressurized air drowning out the sound of gunfire and screams. As the pod jettisoned into space, Mark slumped back in his seat, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The heart pulsed in his hands, its light filling the cramped space with an eerie glow. Tears streamed down Mark's face as he thought of Ceres, of the sacrifice he had made to protect the heart. He had given his life to ensure that the artifact would not fall into the wrong hands, to give Mark a chance to escape. But as he drifted through the void, Mark realized that Ceres's sacrifice had been for more than just the survival of the Gem Hadar. The heart, with its immense power and ancient knowledge, had the potential to unite the galaxy against a common threat, to bring about a new era of peace and understanding. Mark knew that he couldn't let that chance slip away. He had to find a way to harness the heart's power, not for conquest or personal gain, but for the greater good of all species. As he activated the escape pod's distress beacon, Mark steeled himself for the long journey ahead. He knew that the road would be fraught with danger, that he would have to navigate the treacherous waters of galactic politics and ancient rivalries to bring about the change he sought. But he also knew that he couldn't do it alone. He would need allies, those who shared his vision of a united galaxy, free from the tyranny of war and oppression. The heart of the Jem'Hadar, once a symbol of hope for a single species, had now become a beacon of light for all, and Mark, the unlikely hero, would stop at nothing to ensure that its power was used for the betterment of all. As he drifted through the inky blackness of space, Mark clutched the heart tightly to his chest, its pulsing light a reminder of the long road ahead. The fate of the galaxy now rested on his shoulders. You have reached the end of the story. 
If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.